Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion here. It is also Thursday, the 30th day of September 2021. The last day of the month, we get into October tomorrow, and we still have Sam out there, a major hurricane, still a Category 4. We also have Victor, which is not looking as healthy as it was, at least potentially looking like it could do yesterday. We'll take a look at that and a peak into October and November. Two months left in the Atlantic hurricane season. We're about two-thirds of the way there. We still have October and November to get through. And some interesting info here coming in from Colorado State University regarding the next several weeks ahead. So let's start off with a look at the satellite animation courtesy of Tropical Tidbits this afternoon. There's Sam and a pretty well-defined eye with that, a very large area of deep convection. There's Victor. Victor looks like it's kind of come apart somewhat, not quite as organized as it looked like it was trying to get yesterday. These things are hard to figure out. I mean, it's way out in the deep tropics, not a lot of shear, you would think, uh, very moist conditions. But for whatever reason, Victor is not taking advantage of the situation and looks a little ragged overall. And uh, But it's still out there. Interesting feature on the Hurricane Center's maps, etc., and it'll generate a few ace points before it dies away. Somewhere out in this vicinity out here, conditions just aren't going to be as favorable going forward. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Caribbean, nice and clear, as is the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, speaking of the Caribbean, you can see some strong upper-level winds cutting across the southern portion of the Caribbean. One more thing to point out, just looking at this satellite animation, you can see a few interesting things and a, and a big reason why Sam is going to turn and head out into the open Atlantic still. And that is, look, right here you can see this trough off the east coast of the U.S., low pressure up here over uh, the northwestern Atlantic, southeastern Canada, that region. So you've got lower heights over here and troughing for the most part. And then clearly the outline of a very large area of high pressure sitting out over the Atlantic here and uh, in between this alleyway for Sam to take advantage of, which is where all these clouds are streaming through. Just general good old synoptic meteorology for you. Sometimes you don't need the charts and the models. You can just look at the satellite animation and generally know what's what. I think that's neat. Just thought I'd point that out. Here's a close-up animation of Sam as well. Very well-defined eye again this afternoon. Solid Category 4 pressures anywhere from the upper 930s to lower 940s, depending on when recon is in and out. Lots and lots of research data from the reconnaissance planes, either from NOAA. Um, I think the Air Force, yeah, the Air Force has also flown out there, the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Group, Squadron, whatever. Uh, they've been there, too, doing a lot of research and other um, useful time spent in this hurricane. Again, since it's not threatening land, it really does make it less stressful for everybody. And so when they do these research missions, they realize that lives are not in the balance there at the shoreline. Think about Ida, as that was coming in, strengthening as quick as it was. They knew a lot of people down there were going to be in harm's way, uh, and, and certainly their property. Whereas with something like Sam, you can remove that part of the stress and they can just do their job and gather a lot of useful information about eye wall replacement cycles and other stuff that they do with the drop songs, learning about the ocean atmosphere interface, so forth and so on. So there you go. Lots of lightning around the periphery, a little bit in the core area. Sam been a major hurricane now for more than five days. Pretty remarkable. Kind of rare to see that. That doesn't happen very often. So here's the track map for Sam and Victor. Let's scooch in real quick here closely. There's Bermuda right there, and the Tropical Storm Watch is in effect for that area. Sam will pass, again, comfortably to the east in terms of direct impacts from anything resembling near the core, but it's large enough there that it could have some Tropical Storm winds impacting that area uh, as it goes by. We'll take a closer look at that tomorrow because we can really start to narrow things down. We'll look at the wind field and what the National Hurricane Center is talking about in terms of the extent of tropical storm force winds. Now the other thing that Sam is doing is generating these swells that are emanating out from the center all around in concentric circles like I'm trying to draw and they're going to reach the shores over here of the US and elsewhere. You know, the, As it goes by it'll reach the northern coast of 
the islands down here, and those swells will bring in some really big waves, uh, especially as Sam's wind field gets larger, and that's going to persist for several days. And again, as we go into the weekend, people going down to the beach still, it's pretty warm along the southeast coast of the U.S., people venturing down to the beaches of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, etc. you got to be mindful of those swells coming in. They're fun to play in. Kids like it. The surfers love it. But they do have a lot of energy contained within them, and they can create rip currents. They help to spawn that. And those big breaking waves coming over the top of you, yep, you can get neck and back injuries if you're not careful. So just keep that in mind, not trying to spoil your fun out there, but you got to be careful, all right? you got to respect the how large they are and all that energy out there. All right, so Victor no longer forecast to become a hurricane. Again, overall conditions out this way apparently just not quite as favorable as they were appearing to be yesterday. Nevertheless, it's the 20th name storm of the season, way down there in the southeast part of the main development region, kind of late in the year as well. We don't see development out this far east and south that often. It does happen, but not very often. And Victor will stay out over the open Atlantic as well. Again, just not much in the way of solid, big-time ridging over the Atlantic out here to steer these systems west towards land areas. That's not there this year, and nobody's complaining about that, I'm sure. All right? All right, so a look real quick. I was mentioning this in this graphic right here that you can see the outline of everything on the satellite. Well, you can definitely see it here on the analysis here and the forecast from Tropical Tidbits. There's that big ridge sitting out over a good deal of the eastern Atlantic and back over Africa. There's that trough that's dug in. Remember, days ago we were wondering what's going to happen. We're going to get a cutoff low that retrogrades back here over the Gulf Coast, helping Sam to pinwheel into the you know, New England states or the, the Mid-Atlantic or whatever. Lots and lots of speculation. You remember, it was just a few days ago. Six, seven days ago now, probably. Who knows? Uh, I remember, and there was a lot of angst, you know, because we weren't sure. It looked like there could be just enough ridging, maybe coming over the top of Sam and bending it back in. Not going to happen. Instead, what we see here is this general area of troughiness off the east coast of the U.S., over the northwest Atlantic. You lower those heights, you create this alleyway right through here, and that is Sam's path around the western side of what ridging there is. That's the general way to look at it. You know, there's complexities and other nuances, but that's the general idea. So if we put this into motion, you can see how this turns out. Uh, low pressure way up here over southeast Canada, as opposed to strong high pressure, which some of the models were saying was going to be there, didn't turn out to be that way, and that's a good thing because it leaves Sam not bothering anybody too much except for maybe Bermuda, and then that big old area of low pressure combines, maybe, this is out at day five or so, into a huge ocean storm off the coast of Newfoundland. I'm going to tell you something, look how large that area of dense isobars is. Right, that area is, singular is, trying to make sure my grammar is correct. That's a large area of high wind, strong wind and energy over the northern Atlantic. That in and of itself is a beast of a storm that the heat energy from Sam gets entrained into. Wow, that is a whopper for sure. So anybody out there in the North Atlantic with shipping interests, the sword fleet, you know, the fishing vessels out there, any ocean going container ships, etc. That is a monster storm out there at day five. And you can see that reflected pretty well here on the Western Atlantic version of this down at the 5,000 foot level. At least, well, you know what? It doesn't show that because it's too far south and west. Let's go this way. Uh, check it out here. You can see how this combines with that feature there and really blows up into that big storm there just for a couple of days right off the uh, coast of Newfoundland. But back down to... The western part of the basin, I did want to show you that out to day five, and this puts us into the first few days of October, nothing really going into the Caribbean to be too concerned with. There's day five right there. One little impulse right here, we have to watch a little lowering of the pressures through here overall. And that's five days out. We'll see how things evolve. We're getting into that time of the year where we really have to watch this region. 
but I don't see anything just yet in the operational guidance that suggests we have to worry yet. But there's always a but, right? The ensemble guidance of both the Euro and the GFS indicating down the road a piece after about the first week of October, we might start to see conditions uh, becoming more favorable in the Caribbean Sea. So we got to wait a little bit. You know, we'll have a little bit of a break here. Victor will come and go. Sam will come and go. And we might actually have a period of a few days with no named storms on the map. Then, later in October, we have to be ready. And that takes me to this tweet from Dr. Phil Klotzbach. Very interesting as they are updating their last uh, couple months of the forecast uh, for the rest of the season. The next two weeks, above average ace, mainly because of Sam. But the October to November Caribbean forecast indicating, if we look at this PDF file here, uh, above average activity expected in the median there. I guess my internet or somebody's internet is being slow. Uh, but going on for the rest of the season, it's all right here. I'll put a link to this in today's discussion if you want to read about it. Uh, the Madden-Julian oscillation going into phase five over the next several days and the likely weaken the MJO over the maritime continent, possibly due to the background base state being driven by a transition to La Nina. And so that'll be really interesting. You can see that reflected in his graphics here. There's the Madden-Julian oscillation kind of dying out over the this area of the world, favoring more upward motion eventually over the Western Hemisphere because the La Nina comes into play. And we can see that reflected in the ensemble uh, mean here from the EPS, the ensemble forecast system from the Euro. Lots of rising motion coming in later in October after about the 5th and beyond, all the way through the end of the month perhaps, well, the middle of the month anyway, over the area that we were just talking about, the Caribbean, the Western Atlantic, sinking motion over the Pacific. That's what all this orange indicates this region right through here with persistent, I mean, not budging, rising motion happening, generally speaking, over the Indian Ocean and the Maritime Continent region, maybe weakening a little bit through here, but this is important right here, this rising indicator in the modeling here at 200 millibars, coupled with this, the La Nina really starting to come on, I think, and Phil, Dr. Klotzbach, talks about this, uh, in his PDF file there, that discussion, NOAA should eventually, presumably in October, officially declare that we're in a La Nina again. And by the way, I issued another edition, issued, produced, whatever, made available another edition of Hurricane U yesterday. It was available on Patreon a couple of days ahead of time. After all, they are the ones that support this kind of stuff. Uh, so check that out in my YouTube channel it's called Hurricane U. I had Dr. Klotzbach on, and we talked about a lot of this, about the ACE, why that's important, the AMO, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, this La Nina stuff that's coming on, and how the rest of the season looks. You can check it out in video form, Hurricane U. It's on my YouTube channel. I just published it publicly yesterday. All right? All right. Well, that'll about do it for me. From me, for me, whatever, for this afternoon. You guys have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with you more. It's October. We'll talk some more about how that's going to pan out tomorrow afternoon.